Welcome to the leading podcast for long-term weight management. Subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss an episode. You can connect with Jenny on all social media channels. You can also sign up to the newsletter to receive frequent content and tips for weight loss success. Hey guys, welcome to episode five of the Power Over Food podcast. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've had a great week. Just before I get going, just a reminder, if you haven't listened from the start, if this is the first time you've listened to one of the Power Over Food podcasts, I strongly recommend that you go back to episode one as I will be taking you on a journey and each podcast is another building block, if you like, to become really successful at managing your weight. So by all means, listen to this one, but I really recommend going back to episode one. And if you are finding these podcasts valuable, please don't forget to share them with others. Let's help everybody understand their relationship with food and begin to have a successful relationship with food, begin to have power over food. So today I wanted to talk about secret eating and I'm sure many of you can relate to eating in secret. Um, So when we hide our food or hide how much food we're eating or hide when we eat certain types of food. So it may be that you hide it from work colleagues, it may be that you hide your eating from partners or friends or from children or from parents. And quite often, when we are eating in secret, it's, it's rushed. It may be that you have sat in the car and eaten, or you've stood at the, the fridge while the others in your household are in the living room, and you're kind of, it's almost like when I secret eat, or when I have secret eaten in the past, it's like how much I can get in really, really quick before somebody else comes in the room. I've even had clients that have taken food into the toilet, because they know nobody's going to interrupt them in the toilet. And if you can relate to this, then hopefully I'm going to share some of my insights on how I got a grip on my secret eating. And it's still there in the background and I think it always will be. It will always be part of me because that's who I am. But now I can manage that secret eating. In fact, when I was thinking about recording this podcast, I actually remembered a time when I was at my heaviest And I worked in the city centre of where I live. And each lunchtime, I'd pop out for lunch and I'd buy a a Boots meal deal. You know, the Shapers meal deals? I don't know if they still do them because I haven't had one in years. But in my head, that was me being good. And to all my work colleagues, they would see me having a Shapers meal deal and a Diet Coke. And it would look like I was really trying to lose weight. But they didn't know that on the way back to the office, I'd popped a Greg's and bought a sausage roll. And I'd eaten it walking down an alleyway back to my office, back to the theatre, as quickly as I possibly could. Because then nobody else would know that I've eaten that. And to the outside world, it looked as if I was really trying hard to lose weight. I used to think that if I didn't have that extra thing that nobody knew about, that I would be hungry and I would get hungry. So that was, from what I can remember, why I'd eat extra without other people knowing, or certainly at lunchtime. And even once I'd lost my weight, I still found myself eating in secret and lying to others about what I had eaten that day. And the craziest thing is, the people that I was lying to, they would not have said anything about why I'd eaten, but clearly I knew that my body didn't need these extra calories, so therefore I was maybe ashamed of eating them, and if nobody else knew, then nobody else could judge me. Now, I think we have many reasons for secret eating, and I've just shared a few of them, but I guess guilt, shame, and confusion is definitely top of the list. And guilt, I think, comes from wanting food that we don't think we should have. So maybe we know we're eating something that is very calorific or it's not part of the plan that we've decided to follow. And that is, you know, where the guilt comes from because we we feel that we shouldn't be doing it. And that's why I always try and encourage people to not think about food as being bad food or that we're naughty when we eat something. Because those sorts of feelings lead us to feeling guilty then when we do eat high-calorie food. 
And going back to the secret eating, it's very unlikely that somebody would secretly eat an apple or some grapes. So it usually is high calorie food that we secret eat. Shame often comes with secret eating. And I think the shame is quite often because we don't like the way we look. So we know we look overweight. We know other people can see that we are not managing our food intake because of the way we look. And we're embarrassed about that. So if we're eating in secret, then we fool ourselves that the outside world doesn't see what we eat. And therefore, as far as they're concerned, we are doing really well on our diet and we, were, we are trying really hard to gain some control over our weight. And then the confusion, I think, is really common because we're often a little bit mystified as to why we keep doing it, why we can't seem to stop. And so many people say to me, Jenny, I'm, I'm so unhappy with my weight and I, I just don't understand why I can't stop eating because if I'm that un unhappy, then surely I'd be able to stop this. And as we all know, it's not that easy because if it was that easy, we would all be walking around at the size we wanted to be and a healthy weight and have this, you know, wonderful relationship with food. We would have that power over the food. I guess you want to know how I stopped my secret eating um, or, you know, controlled my secret eating. And what massively helped me was being honest with other people about my eating and once you share with other people what you're eating, then the the secret bit is gone because people know what you're doing. And I'm not suggesting that you, you know, you go into the office tomorrow and you tell everybody that you've got a stash of food in your bag or that you go into the toilet and eat it because you don't want them to know. I'm not suggesting you do that. But when you choose just a couple of people you can be really, really honest with about you're eating then it it becomes a little bit more manageable because you're not trying to you know bear this all on your own this is not just on your shoulders and quite often by sharing that it, it just automatically feels less stressful and like you can breathe a little bit calmer and start to work on it and being honest about it is the first step if you like so there's a great activity called the Jahari window, which I've used in the past with my clients. And it's about the four parts to ourselves. There's the open self, the hidden self, the blind self, and the unknown self. And you can Google this. Google the Jahari window and you will find loads of information about it. And you can even print off a little document that you can fill in. But I'm going to just share with you how it works briefly. Now, the idea is you fill in the windows or the four boxes, if you like. The open self are things that you know about yourself and that you are happy to share with other people. And then we've got the hidden self. The hidden self are things that you know about yourself that you do not share with other people. So, for example, when I was at my heaviest, my weight was definitely in my hidden self box. I did not tell anyone how much I weighed and I would have been mortified if somebody asked me or if somebody found out. This is also where your secret eating would be. So it's part of your hidden self. You do not share this with anybody else. Then we have the blind self. The blind self are things that you don't know, but other people have noticed about you. So people that are close to you, maybe your family, they have noticed things about your relationship with food. So they may notice that you eat really fast or they may notice that you often graze when you're preparing the meals because you've had a stressful day at work and you don't even realise how much you're eating, how many calories that you've actually consumed while you're cooking for the, for the family. And there's lots of things when you start to ask people they might say oh I've noticed that you always say that you don't want any of this and in your head you might think yeah that's because I've already had three of them or so just ask them ask people what do you notice about me and my relationship with food they might say notice that you always turn down a shopping trip and you might think yeah that's actually because I'm worried that we're going to go into the changing rooms and I won't fit in the clothes or I won't like myself in the clothes because they're too tight or they don't look the same on me as they do on the models or on my friends. 
So that's the blind self. And then the unknown self is an area of self-discovery. So it's things that you don't know about yourself, that other people don't know about you. And I always use the example of when I lost weight, that was in my unknown self box because I really didn't think I could ever be six and a half, seven stone lighter. And once I began to lose weight, that was came up in my hidden self box. And I moved that into my open self box because I wanted to tell the world that I had lost weight because I felt so, so good about it, so amazing about it. Now, the idea is that you find out as much as you can about yourself and your relationship with food. And then you move as much of it as you can into the open self box. And the more open and honest you are about your relationship with food, the easier it becomes to manage your weight. And I'm going to share an example in a moment. But just as an aside note, when you're asking for other people about their thoughts about your relationship with food, make sure you talk to people that you can really, really trust, not people that might you know, not be so helpful. And obviously, ask on a good day, ask when you're feeling really, really positive about losing weight and maintaining your weight so that you can ask with an open mind and not feel that you're being criticised for what they may share with you. And see it as a learning, it is a, it's a learning curve. I'm going to wrap up this podcast by sharing a story with you. And this is called my chip shop story. And the reason I want to share it with you is because for me, when I discovered what I'd done with this chip shop story, um, it was what I call a light bulb moment. So it kind of made me go, gosh, I'm still hiding food. Wow. And it really, really helped me with my continuous weight management journey. So here goes. I was working late one night and um, my partner at the time texted me and said, do you want to pick up fish and chips on the way home? And I immediately thought, yes, great, fish and chips. I love fish and chips. I went to the chip shop. Now, bear in mind, this was probably about half nine, ten o'clock at night. I got to the chip shop and I was about to order. Now, the standard was we would have one piece of fish and a portion of chips and we would share it. Now, to me, this is obscene. And even now, as I say it, I believe if you go into the chip shop, you're having fish and chips. Why would you want to share them with anybody? So I ordered the standard fish and chips and I said, oh, can I have a large portion of chips, please? Because I don't know, I made up some story like I was looking after sick parent or something and we needed extra chips so we asked for a large portion of chips and I looked at them dishing up and I thought I'm not sure that's going to be enough for me so I asked for something else as well I, I think it was a I don't know a sausage in batter or a piece of row or something and I sat in the car and I ate the extras and then I got in and I threw the the fish and chips on the side and I said I'm just going up to get changed went to get me comfies on I was praying that I didn't get kissed on the way in um, because he would have tasted salt and vinegar on my lips and I got changed went downstairs and he was saying there's there's way too many chips here they've put loads and loads of chips in did you ask for a large portion and I just think oh my goodness no no um he's finding me out oh gosh um no I didn't ask for a large portion and he dished the portions up and, you know, you're probably going to guess anyway, but what he did with the other um, the other chips, he threw them in the bin. And I was devastated. So we sat and ate the fish and chips, and all I could think about was the chips that were in the bin that I wanted to eat. And actually, I was quite satisfied, but my brain wouldn't have told me I was satisfied because I was obsessed that he'd thrown some of my chips away. And it wasn't until the next day I was doing the Jahari window activity with some of my clients and I realised when I was talking about the hidden self box that the night before my hidden self, my secret eating was there. And I just said, wow, I'm going to share this story with you. And I shared it with my clients and they said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to go home and I'm going to have to open put that into my open self box because that's what I encourage all of you to do when you're trying to learn about your relationship with food so I went home and I said can we just talk about the chips last night and I said 
this is what I did. I, I ate in the car on the way home and I also bought extra chips because I wanted more food and you took them away. And he said, well, if you wanted them, what, then then why didn't you say? What? And, and he... I guess he couldn't understand. And what what he said was, if you were hungry, why didn't you say you needed some more? And that really made me think because the answer to that was I wasn't hungry. In fact, I probably wasn't even hungry to sit down and eat the fish and chips because I'd already eaten in the car. But it was my brain, my sloth brain telling me that that wasn't going to be enough. And my sloth brain telling me that I'd work till half nine at night and I deserved more food because I had worked late. It's not like I'd actually burnt any more calories to deserve them, but in my brain, everybody else finished work at five o'clock. I was the only person in the world that was working this late and therefore I didn't deserved so much more food than everybody else. So that's my chip shop story. And by sharing that with my other half it meant that I wouldn't do it again. So next time, not that I go to the chip shop that regularly, but if I was to go to the chip shop, I would think, well, he knows that story now and it's kind of like pointless doing it. And, you know, I just just wouldn't. So that's why sharing it and being honest with the people that are really, really close to you can help you just have a, a, a little bit more openness about your relationship with food and hopefully stop that secret eating you know whether it's chocolate bars in the car whether it's sitting in mcdonald's car parks whatever it is if you can be really honest with people then it helps you move forward with your relationship with food so that's it guys that's my chip shop story that's a little bit about secret eating and the jahari window do feel free to to google it and have a look at it And don't forget, you can connect with me on social media. I always love hearing how people are doing with their weight management. I'm on Instagram, underscore Jenny Mac. I have a Power Over Food Mastermind group on Facebook, which you are more than welcome to join. I'd love to see you inside the group. And I post motivational videos and thoughts on there too. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you're enjoying it, subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Please do leave me a little review. Tell me how you're getting on with your weight loss. And that's it. Have a great day.